Hello, everyone. I mean, I don't even have to start talking about the person that I have the honor of speaking with today, Neil Morse. He is a tremendous keyboard player, guitar player, songwriter, producer, uh, one of the most talented and prolific uh, uh, musicians that you can find out there today and somebody that you can find all of the details to follow and purchase his music in the details of this video below. Hi, Neil. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, good. good. Yeah, doing great. <laughs> well, so, uh, Neil, what I would like to start uh, talking a little bit is about is about your source of, of inspiration. Now, one of the things that uh, that is uh, truly inspiring about about your your work and your career is that you, not only you're able to produce a very significant amount of music, uh, is that it's it's incredibly uh, quality and detailed oriented it's 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 very very different from what we see in other aspects of music so i would like to dwell in, in in a little bit into your source of inspiration what allows you to achieve that that level of uh, of incredible and quality driven production well thank you um you know i you just do what you do i i don't i don't know uh, you know, I'm always, I'm, every recording that I'm making, every song that I'm writing, every piece that I'm working on, I'm always trying to make it as excellent as possible, as I think most people are. I would hope so. Um, so, you know, excellence is a, is a principle that I try to adhere to, uh, but also, you know, trying not to get too... Uh, too caught up in my concept of perfection. Yeah. You know, sometimes the sometimes uh, leaving some, you know, leaving things flawed. Um, I'll just have the sense that I should just leave it. Hmm. Um, but my source of inspiration um, is many things. I mean, it's primarily my relationship with God, yeah. but I'm also inspired by, uh, you know, I might be inspired by a, with a conversation I had with a friend or a podcast that I listened to or, or the love I have for my wife or, um, or that, you know, uh, my sins are washed away by Jesus Christ. You know, I mean, there's, there's lots of different things that are, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to say like exactly one thing, but I, I, I think, you know, the scripture that says uh, every good and perfect gift comes down from the father of lights. I basically, uh, I give God all the, credit and glory for anything that I've been able to do mm -hmm. and uh, just really I'm very thankful to be able to be working on music today actually I'm working on the some new pieces today and so uh, it's it's always just the, the fresh inspiration is what what uh, keeps me excited about being alive and uh, you mentioned your relationship with God as a clear driver of uh, of inspiration to achieve your goals. Um, in terms of your faith, how do you how do you see that process? Uh, do you feel that uh, you know? Many times when we talk about faith, uh, you know, as a Christian myself, uh, people think that it's something like stale. No, that's something that's just there. Huh? It's something that you nurture, don't you think, and that helps you achieve your goals and learn from your mistakes at the same time. Um, is that something that you apply as well to your to your business to to uh, managing the uh, the band and the studio and the record label? Oh yeah, well, you know, um, I endeavor to be spirit led in all things. Mm -hmm. So, and I was I was just doing a podcast with my friend Bill Bill Hubauer, one of the members of the Neil Morse band, uh, just this week, and. Um, I was just saying, well, what I've learned is that God's just a lot smarter than I am. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so as much as possible, I try to remember to pray about every decision and to see if, you know, if I feel something from him, you know, even, sometimes it's, sometimes it's a very clear kind of inner voice. Uh, mm -hmm. Other times, 
Other times it's just sort of a sense that this is the direction I should go. Uh, but I always try to follow that because it's just uh, better. He, he, he knows what's the very best. He has the very best in mind for all of us. And the more that we walk with him, the more that we know that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, when uh, you create music, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's uh, very apparent about your music is that your lyrics are deeply personal, and at the same time, uh, they you're able to connect both to with a Christian and with a secular audience at the same time. And one of the comments that I see from your fans is precisely that: is that even people that are not um, that don't feel uh, religious feel that there is a deep connection in those in those feelings that uh, allow them to relate to the lyrics, which is something that is. I would say uh, quite different from other uh, musicians and uh, particularly in the prog world in which we, we tend to be used to seeing people try to create illusions or create uh, images around concepts that are more or less uh, magical or, or, or science fiction or, 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 or historical. Um, do you think that that is one of the, the one of the uh, one of the key elements that that makes makes uh, you not just uh, create more music, but at the same time, one of the, one of the things that I find uh, truly amazing is, is how complex and how incredibly well produced your albums are. Uh, that is something that I find uh, truly incredible, no? Well, um, you don't really know how it's going to turn out, you know, when you set out to start creating or it, it, you know or you're, you're writing lyrics and you're writing from your heart it's it's kind of like any time you might share with somebody or or maybe you might you might feel to give your testimony in a church or or somewhere yeah um you just the the goal is just to share authentically you know but you don't really know how other people are going to respond to it. You don't really know if they're going to relate to it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, when I wrote the testimony, when I wrote the testimony album, I had just quit my bands. And at that time, I really wanted to say it. I was tired of bailing it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. What I mean by it is, I mean, like the spirit of God and everything that, that the Lord was doing in my heart and life. And so I made this really, uh, quite quite pointed uh christian prog album you know where i talk about uh jesus very plainly and i talk about the despair that i went through and all the things that his love brought to my life and um i was surprised at how many people related to it uh non-christians also were related very much to a lot of the things on that album so I think the the deal is to not try to guess what people will relate to, but just share authentically whatever it is that's happening in your heart. And, um, you know, kind of you'll be you'll be surprised at the people that can uh, put, you know, be, that they'll find inspiration from your inspiration. And it's uh, very difficult to to measure or to figure out. Mm -hmm. uh, the details are to purchase testimony and testimony too. It's, uh, there's a second part which is equally as as inspirational and as amazing as the as the first one. Uh, you can find everyone can find them in the details of the uh, of the video. Uh, one of the things that I uh, that I see is that. The, there are different paths to your music. You have your singer, songwriter. I think that one of the things that separates you from other uh, very important people in the prog world is that you clearly have a very uh, detailed vision of a songwriting that's uh, very similar to those of, uh, of, of contemporary pop musicians. Uh, and at the same time, you have a, a vast knowledge of the instruments, keyboards, 
keyboard and, key, and, and guitars that uh, allow you to create these immense landscapes and these, uh, and these extremely long uh, suites that, that have a little bit of everything. No, I find that I, I always remember talking about Supper's Ready as a collection of songs no, for, by Genesis. And uh, in, in, in your work, what I find is that there's a unity to that to those uh, to those elements um and particularly what i what i have seen is that uh, your work with the band with the neil moore's band hmm, and your solo work uh, you have started to become more mm, uh, to separate more the short songs and or the the songs that are sort of uh, more similar to uh, uh, pop and rock with the large suites and that's something that is uh, we have uh, pretty clearly in your forthcoming album no uh, is that something that's that's done on purpose or or do you think that is something that just comes naturally I try to find um, in essence the question is about when you're creating so much music all the time, how do you see what is good for Transatlantic, what is good for the Neil Moore's band, what is good for a solo album? How do you sort of pigeonhole those things? Well, sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's not as obvious. Uh, sometimes I let the bands decide. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll submit a song and the band will be, if the band rejects it, then maybe I'll put it on a solo album. Um, some songs just, you know, kind of scream out at you like a certain band. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I wrote the song Shine and yeah. I, I saved it for San Transatlantic. I wrote it several years before we got together, but I just thought it sounded like it would be good for them. And and I'm thankfully they wanted to do it. Um, most of the time, it's pretty obvious. You know, if it's a pretty if it's a really normal standalone song, then it's probably going to be a solo thing. But not necessarily. You know, it depends on the song, and um, it's all very instinctive. There aren't really any rules. It's all just it's the art, so it's very feeling oriented. Uh -huh. And when you uh, when you're in the process of creating on a daily basis, uh, are you, are you constantly writing? I would assume so, given your 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 incredible production. No? Well, it's a pretty natural thing for me. You know, uh, I wake up in the morning with music in my heart and mind very often, and uh, you know, I just it's the great joy of my life to kind of pursue those things. And uh, so I write a lot uh, um, on vacation, uh -huh. actually. Sometimes I, I actually write more when there's less of the trappings of uh, daily business life and tours and uh, sessions and, and things. Um, so yeah, I, I write pretty consistently, and uh, it's my favorite thing to do. You know how it is. Yeah, is it, we're all we'll always find time. We'll always find time to do the thing that's our favorite thing to do. It's a, it, it is truly truly important that to say that because one of the things that we you know when when people ask us is that it's so important that your work is at the same time something that you enjoy because then it's not work anymore it's 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 something that you're you're that is generating that is making your and helping your life become become complete one of the things that i find very interesting yes is, one of the things that i find very interesting about your new project uh innocence and danger it's called no mm -hmm. uh, is that it seems that it's yeah. uh, it's, it seems that it's uh, that the band is contributing a lot more to the writing process um mm -hmm. and it probably, yeah. is it, it, am i wrong to say that it's probably the most uh, group oriented thing that you have created in since in the neil moore's band discography Um, the, the first album was, was real collaborative too. both of the, I had probably a little more to do with both of the concept albums, similitude oh. of a dream and 
the great adventure. But uh, the grand experiment was also very collaborative. This one might have a little bit more because it has a little bit more Randy, I think, yeah. um, and, and more Bill for sure. Bill mm -hmm. uh, contributed a lot. He brought in a lot for this record. So, yeah, well, I'm glad to, to be giving everybody their space. It's, it's an amazing band, I have to say. One of the things that, that strikes me is, uh, is when you watch your YouTube videos is you get such joy from you guys playing. It's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's uh, uh, it, it, you know, it's uh, uh, contagious. No, I, I saw a video recently on YouTube, I believe. It was a, a classical composer reacting to uh, The Great Adventure. No? And one of the things that he was saying is that these guys really enjoy playing. It's, it's, it, the, the chemistry is so unbelievable that uh, and it's and it's really contagious and despite the fact i personally love the production in uh, the similitude of a dream and the great adventure i think that the production is fantastic uh, let me say that because i'm a really i really love great productions no um but, uh, yeah. but the live uh, rendition the live rendition, I, I stumbled upon it uh, recently. It's, uh, and, and, and I found it uh, that it's, that it's got this, this raw energy that truly, truly uh, it, it becomes contagious. I, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing now because uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to the new album because I, I think that the band is, just keeps getting better and better and better. No? Uh, what yeah, do you think that I want great. to... They are. One of the things that I wanted to I wanted to ask you about one of my favorite uh, of your of your works, which is Jesus Christ, the yeah, the Exorcist, no, the the, the musical mm -hmm. you created. I think it's yeah. I think it's an amazing, yeah. I think it's an amazing body of work. And, and, and what I what I find it that it's amazing about it. It's first, it's it's the, the complexity of the music, and at the same time, it has. Uh, pieces that that are truly showstoppers in the in the in the theater you know uh, tradition uh, particularly i have to say oh my god the girl that sings mary magdalene the, the song free at last yeah is, the song free at last i think it's one uh, uh, as a song i think it's one of your best songs i think that the the lyrics are you know, they, they, they bring chills to my skin. But I wanted to ask oh, about, about that project because it was, a long, uh, it was a long project to complete and it's been uh, one that, uh, that certainly you've put a lot of work into and that everybody, again, will find the details to purchase uh, here. Um, yeah, well, I, I got a call from, yeah. um, from a music business friend of mine very enthusiastic guy, East Coast guy, uh, in 2008, I think. Yeah. And he said, Neil, my friends and I, we've been listening to Jesus Christ Superstar. And we were all thinking, man, this is great. But somebody needs to do a new one, an updated thing. And, you know, I, I, I said to them all, I've got the guy. I've got the guy. <laughs> so he called me and I and I, we had a I had a laugh about it. Um, and then I thought about it. I was very, uh, I was very familiar with Jesus Christ Superstar. I liked it a lot when I was 12, 13 years old when it came out, you know. Um, a lot of good songs and, you know, good pieces of music in there in my, in my view. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of sat with that and I prayed about it and I felt like I should do it. So I spent about two months, uh, two or three months writing and recording the demos of the first draft of that. And then uh, he shopped it around to like Broadway producers and uh, movie people, record company people, and everybody passed. And then, um, what was it, 2017, I think? Mm -hmm. I think that was the year that I was thinking about. Mike was very busy, and I was thinking about what can we do for Morse Fest this year? And I thought, man, I'd really love to do Jesus Christ the Exorcist, even though it isn't even released yet. And so I started doing a rewrite. And when I, right when I started doing the rewrite, Michael calls me out of the blue and says, you're not going to believe this. I've got a deal for the Jesus album. Yeah. And I said, wow, that's really interesting because I'm right. I'm just rewriting it right now. And so it was just a, it was just a perfect 
perfectly orchestrated thing. The Frontiers Records uh, did, wanted to put it out. And so right around the time that we performed it, that deal was all happening. And then we were able to put the record out. And um, yeah, it was just amazing how it all came together. And I really felt like the Lord helped me with the, too, with the whole thing. And filing, finding Talon David, she's a local talent here. She went to high school with my son. Really? <laughs> and she was like playing the, yeah, and she was playing the leads in the musicals. You know, my son was in the musicals at the high school. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't remember which ones they did right now off the top of my head, but, but Talon was always in there and she was great. And uh, it was my wife said, hey, have you thought about, I was really having a hard time finding somebody to play Mary. And I was just thinking about for the live performance at Morse Fest. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking about the record yet. Um, and then she, I, I, you know, so I said, yeah, man, I, it's only, it was only, I want to say it was about five weeks before the concert and I still didn't have a Mary. Wow. A pretty, pretty scary. Yeah. And so when I, uh, I, uh, emailed Talon and she sent back a little audition tape and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I know she did such a great job. Oh, the, the, what a wonder. Her, what a her wonder. Her voice is absolutely, I mean, amazing, truly amazing. And it's, yeah, the production is, the, the voice is so in, beautifully recorded. The, it's crystal clear and, and the subtlety of the, of the music, because, you know, sometimes in musicals, you get the, the, uh, the balance between the bombast and the, and the, you know, and the subtlety. And you have this, this, this absolutely beautiful. I think, and, and I think as a, as a musical, it works incredibly, incredibly well, because what I find about it is that as a Christian, I can relate to the story uh, in, a, in a very deep way. But I find that also mm -hmm. from the perspective of somebody that's not a Christian, that it's it's hugely entertaining and it's <laughs> and it's and it's very realistic, very real. No, very, 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 uh, very different from from other from other musicals with all of the good things about them that they that they may have. And the and the fact that it, on top of it, it's a prog rock. Uh, uh, it has very strong prog rock elements. Uh, yeah, it, it's very difficult. I, I don't think I don't think I've seen anything similar to that in in the in in the genre. Do you, have you have you seen anything uh, similar to that uh, in in other in, from other artists? Because we have seen rock operas, but I'm talking about something that is in the prog rock that is so, so similar to this. I haven't seen anything. I truly think it's it's unique. No, I don't. I don't think so. Um... Yeah, well, I'm glad you like it so much. That's great. No, I think it's yeah. a it's a it's a fantastic record. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to to ask you as well, in terms of the is, you you have numerous ways of reaching your audience. Um, uh, you have uh, uh, the the so called uh, inner circle in your website that all of you can can get uh, uh, access to. Uh, you have the Morse Fests, which are these festivals in which you play uh, entire albums for how many days is the uh, how many days are Morse Fest? I have never been had the lux the luxury or the. Or the it's usually uh, a, a week. It's a weekend. It's a yeah. Weekend. It's a weekend. This year is. A Mm -hmm. I think October 9 and 10, I think, or maybe mm -hmm. 8 and 9. I don't, I, I don't know. But it, it's that that weekend in October. And yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, as a musician in the modern world, you've got to figure out uh, interesting ways to to reach people and, you know, and also, uh, in, you know, different ways to create income streams and all of that to kind of make everything work. It's mm -hmm. uh I started the inner circle. The inner circle is a subscription kind of fan club thing. And I started that in 2005. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, you got to, got to thank all the, 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 the fans are the ones that make it work because <laughs> you can, you can run something up the flagpole, but if nobody signs up, you know, then it, it uh, so I'm really thankful for all the people that have joined the inner circle and are still part of it. So I, I give them a release, uh, every other month and a newsletter every month. And that's the inner circle. Um, 
Yeah, Morse Fest is, uh, it's really uh, just a you know, weekend of concerts, and it, but it's become something so much more. It's like part homecoming, part spiritual retreat, part music festival. It's, uh, it's become a lot of things <laughs> to a lot of people. And uh, people really come and can, they come and connect with each other in, in a special way. And uh, it's, uh, it's really, a be- that's turned into a, a beautiful thing. Um, I also have Waterfall, my own streaming app uh, that was born out of my desire to have people have the convenience and uh, not just convenience, but I don't know, the miracle of streaming to me, it's just like, the whole idea that you can be out on a crib, a crib, a beach in the Caribbean or something with your wireless speaker and listen to, you know, uh, stream music on your phone is just, it's so convenient. It's, it's amazing, you know, and now with, with uh, most cars not having CD players in them, you know, you, you pretty much have to do downloading and, but it's kind of hard. I, I find it kind of hard to get stuff on my phone. Yeah. Like, it's difficult to, you know, hooking your phone up to the computer and then trying to get stuff downloaded on there. And, you know, so the waterfall streaming thing is, is just a way for people to have access to like almost everything I've ever been involved with recording. And then you can listen to it from your recliner. And if the phone rings, you can answer the phone. And then when you hang up the phone, it just keeps streaming right where it was left (laughs) off. You don't have to get up and you don't have to get up and turn the, you know, pick up your vinyl needle or any of that. So it's just very, very uh, convenient and it sounds really good. And I'm really uh, blessed to have a team of technicians that help me put it together. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. We will put all the details uh, for people to follow that uh, in the description. Yeah. The, yeah. Where you sign up for that is waterfallstreaming.com. Okay. Waterfallstreaming.com. Okay. Phenomenal. Yeah. When you uh, prepare, uh, well, one of the questions that uh, many people have asked is, how has it been throughout the pandemic? Uh, You obviously have a few avenues and you've been creating quite a lot because it's been a new transatlantic record, new Neil Moore's band record. Uh, But uh, how has it been uh, in in this uh, difficult uh, year and a half? Uh, Well... I mean, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I wouldn't have made Solo Gratia, I don't think. Not as it was. It was because I had so much time. That was right at the beginning of the quarantine month of April. I didn't, we didn't leave the house, yeah. hardly. Um, and that was when I made that album. That was one, uh, one musical result. Again, I was just really thankful that to have a, a space in which, the, and, and with the advent of, of personal recording gear, you know, I was able to do meaningful work at home mm-hmm. and connect with people on Zoom and, you know, all the technology, the, the t- technology that's made it possible for me to just get up in the morning and come in here and actually make a, a record that, as you were saying, sounds you know, first rate. Yeah. Like we, that talent David was recorded, was recorded here. Yeah. You know, we just have a really good microphone and yeah. we're going through a good mic pre and, you know, you have some good gear and you can make some really good sounds. So I'm just really, I'm really thankful for that. I, I miss playing live, but to be honest, I've never been that much of a road dog. If you look at my schedule, I've never toured like a lot of people tour, you know, mm. I've only, in my career, the most I've ever been out at one time was maybe five weeks. Okay. Um, whereas some people are like, you know, two years or something, you know, yeah. with a week off here and there. So, uh, you know, the, the worst part about the pandemic for me uh, was, um, well, getting COVID was a real drag. I got COVID in October. Um, it was being, not being able to be with my family, even. Yeah, not being able to be with people. And, um, you know, that's, that was, that's the worst part for me. Yeah. It's been terrible for so many people. My, 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 both of yes. my parents had COVID, uh, 
quite old, both of them, 82 and 83 years old. So, you know, right, I, yeah. I was uh, quite worried, but they're fine. And, uh, Good. and now things seem to be getting back. So are you going to be touring uh, soon? I, I, I seem to be, uh, I, I thought I heard uh, Mike Portnoy saying something about uh, a tour for, um, uh, for the new album. Is, is, is that something that's uh, already been penciled? Yeah, yeah, it's booked actually. You can buy tickets. Ah, if you great. go to neilmorse.com, neilmorse.com, I think under tour dates or something like that, you can find the tour dates and VIP tickets are available there. And yeah, um, yeah, we're doing like, uh, well, we're doing Morse Fest and then we're doing like nine shows in the US and then jump all the way to the end of May and June of 2022 and we're doing Europe. Oh, so, so you're coming yeah. to Europe. Uh, this is very important for, yes. for us because so yeah. I, mean, I, I used to go five, six times to the U.S. every year, but obviously that is that is uh, that is not as easy as it was before uh, yet. But if you're coming to Europe, right. that is awesome. That is awesome. Is that and that's also uh, already penciled. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, that- it's uh, it's on sale. Are you, huh. Yeah, we're playing in London. Uh, um, Oh, I don't know. Middle oh. of June, I think. Ah, I'm seeing you in London without any doubt. Don't worry. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. That's great. Um, it, 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 you mentioned Solar Gratia. Uh, it, it's a very different album. Uh, it's it's heavier, and the the production is also. Uh, I found it very. Uh, how could I say this? Bob Esrin like probably. What what is what 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 was the what is your general feeling about that album? I find it I, I, it's a great 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 album. I, you know I, I, you know I'm a big fan and I find it very very good. But uh, can you tell us a little bit about your thought process with that album? Was it was it a conscious decision to make it uh, sound that way and make it uh, uh, more raw? every project every album is a little bit different and that one you know i was writing uh from the perspective of the apostle paul and so it's based on paul's journeys uh mainly his pre-conversion and conversion story um and uh some of that was the the way the writing came out and then um the production choices, a, a little bit of that certainly has to go uh, to the credit of Rich Mauser. Okay. Um, sometimes I sometimes I think things are a little edgy, uh, you know, they're a little heavy. But when he gets done, like doing his thing, a lot of times it's it come it. If it's a little bit heavy, it'll be like really heavy once he's done <laughs> mixing it. So. Yeah, he, he, he just brought out the bigness. I remember there were several times in my notes just like, uh, this is a little too big. Can you make it a little smaller? Uh, um, yeah, so some of that's in, in Rich Mauser's mixing style as well. It works really well, I have to say. It's a, it's a, it's a fantastic record that everyone should should buy. Um, I'm not going to take a, a lot more of your time, uh, but I wanted to finish with uh, a little bit of your what is what are your main so uh, what what are your biggest influences in music then and what what are the things that uh, inform your your what what are you listening to that is not your own your own projects uh, these days well i people might be surprised um i've been in, i've been listening to a lot of miles davis ah. i've been uh, i've been listening to quite a bit of jazz lately um I've also been listening to uh, John Mayer has a new album. I've been listening to that. I like his, I think he's a wonderful singer songwriter. I also, I bought uh, Casey Musgraves golden hour album because I just love that. Oh, what a world song. Yeah. People would probably be surprised to hear me say that because it's very normal, normal music. Yeah. But I love that. Oh, what a world. Don't want to leave. Anyway, I've just been kind of, I have these periods where I get into one song kind of a lot. And I just want to, I suppose a lot of people are like that. It, it kind of fits the mood that you're in. Um, 
I've been doing some traveling and just being in nature, yeah. you know, kids, you know, since sometimes we find ourselves, we can't be with people as much. So I've been in nature a little bit more. And so I've just spending a lot of time just wondering at God's creation. Yeah. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, in your album one, there is quite a lot of, uh, you know, I would say quite a lot of jazz now or a jazz feel to a few of the pieces. Um, very, very intricate and very, very interesting uh, pieces. Uh, do you think that uh, that uh, that is something that you're going to well obviously you're going to continue to pursue or or, or do you think that uh, the the latest that we have uh, seen uh, is uh, is more you know, down the path of what uh, developing the Neil Moore's band and going in your solo projects in a in the in the fashion of the of the last uh, of the last two projects Um, I don't see going in a more jazz direction, really. Um, I like to listen to jazz, but I'm pretty terrible at playing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're too humble. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, I don't know what's going to come next. Um, there are a couple new projects and things that are ready to almost to announce and then, you know, release, um, you know, in the coming months, um, which I can't really, I'm not at liberty to talk about yet, but uh, there's a lot of exciting things coming up. So keep checking back in with the website and, you know, all that stuff, follow me on whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know what direction we will go. Right now I'm just focused on the um, working on the piece that I'm working on now. And yeah. then I'm gonna be getting ready for these uh, for these live shows. And uh, beyond that, who knows? Oh, great. Well, we, 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 we'll definitely be checking on all of those projects because I think that, uh, you know, it, the, I, I mean, I, I cannot say it enough, but the, the both how, uh, you know, the, 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 the amount of work and the quality of the work that you put out is, is, is phenomenal, phenomenal. And I, would tr I really thank want you. to thank you because... The, the other thing is that, you know, historically, you know, I remember Kerry Livgren saying how difficult it was for him to write about his faith and uh, how the, 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 uh, the label would not allow him or, or try to uh, make him change the way that he wrote, etc. So it's, it's absolutely fantastic that you put out these, these beautifully created and crafted pieces of music with such meaningful and, and, and inspiring lyrics. To me, they certainly are. Into my well, thank favorite. you. It's, thank you so much, man. Thank you. It's an absolute uh, honor to have uh, been a little bit of your time. It's been great to talk with you. And uh, we look forward to the tour, the dates uh, that uh, and to your, uh, your new projects. Uh, make sure to check on every of the links that we give to you in the details below and to follow everything that Neil does because it's truly worth it. If you like really good music, <laughs> you have a lot of it more importantly you had a lot of it and all of it is amazing truly believe me <laughs> thank you so much neil it's been an absolute pleasure well thank you man thank you <laughs> thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel like my videos leave your comments below and keep defending freedom thank you very much